For today's video, we're gonna get some gameplay with the new Mythic Constructor, Steel Wool Sid, who is a Kinetic Beats Constructor. The way that I got him was by completing the Gravestone Quest, which is the last quest you'll have to complete for the Caney Valley Act 1 quest line. And that Gravestone Quest was a unique mission type of quest. If you would like to see gameplay of it, I'll leave a link to it in the description. And this is our first time getting gameplay with the Kinetic Beat Constructor, so I am going to run through his perks really quick. His three main abilities are Base, Decoy, and Bull Rush. He also has Creative Engineering, as well as Kinetic Overload. And he also has Lightweight, which is one of the new perks, and that's going to increase your hardware attack speed by 24%, and that's going to allow you to swing your hammer faster. He also has Hammer Critical Chance, which is going to increase your hammer crit rating by 18, and that should help you trigger the Kinetic Overload perk more often. He also has Going and Going, which is going to make your decoy last 2 seconds longer, as well as Software, which is another new perk, and that's going to increase your hardware heavy attack energy efficiency by 150%, so it's going to require less energy to use your heavy attack with hardware melee weapons. He also has Decoy Stun. When Decoy is destroyed or expires, it creates an explosion that deals impact and stuns enemies for 1.5 seconds. And he also has Kinetic Overdrive, which is going to allow you to do more damage to more targets whenever Kinetic Overload is triggered. And he also has Maximum Overload, which is another new perk. And that's going to increase the damage of Kinetic Overload by 310%. And at the very bottom, it says Steel Wool Singer that uses hardware to drop Kinetic Beats. He also has a couple of squad bonuses. For his support squad bonus, he has Hammer Critical Chance which is going to increase your crit rating with blunt melee weapons. And he has decoy stun for his tactical squad bonus, which is the same as his decoy stun perk. It's going to make your decoy create an explosion that deals impact and stun to enemies for one and a half seconds when it's destroyed or expires. Uh, when it comes to evolving him, you're going to get the backpack after you evolve him to two stars. And that backpack is the only accessory that you get when you evolve him. And as for our loadout, we have Stars and Stripes Penny in our support slot to increase our blunt melee damage. And we have Stars and Stripes AC in our tactical slot, so our decoy can periodically damage enemies within its attraction radius. So yeah, this is the loadout that we're going to use. Obviously, you're going to want to use hardware melee weapons when playing with Steel Wool Sid. So I think the weapons we're going to use are either this Walloper if we have water enemies, or if we get a different type of elemental enemy, then we may use this Pulverizer because it does energy damage. One thing I should point out when it comes to your hardware melee weapons is that you may want to put crit rating on it, so that way you can trigger the kinetic overload perk more often, and that's going to allow you to do a lot more damage. But we currently don't have re-perk, so we're going to go ahead and use these perks that it has now. But yeah, that was one thing I wanted to point out. You may want to try to increase your crit rating so you can trigger kinetic overload more often. Also, before we get into the gameplay, I did want to show some examples of his perks and abilities. And the first one we're going to take a look at is his decoy. The cooldown for that is 30 seconds. And as you see, the range really isn't as big as some other constructors. Uh, the reason it's doing damage is because we have Stars and Stripes AC in our tactical slot. And he also has a perk that makes it last 2 seconds longer, so I kind of want to see how long it lasts. Uh, if there's a 30 second cooldown and it ends at 21 seconds, that means it lasts for about 9 to 10 seconds. And his decoy can also stun Husk whenever it expires. Uh, he doesn't have any perks in regards to his bull rush. But the cooldown for that is 15 seconds. And I usually use it when there's a lot of husk or mini bosses attacking walls around objectives. And it's also good to use bull rush when you have takers or smashers charging at you. Because as you can see right there, it prevented him from doing any damage to us. But yeah, he doesn't have any perks that help buff his bull rush. He also doesn't have any perks in regards to his base. But the cooldown for that is 5 seconds and it uses 100 energy. And as you can see right here, it only extends out to three tiles. So he does have one of the smallest bases in the game. And again, he doesn't have any perks that help buff his base. So he's not really a good constructor when it comes to his base either. But he's not really an abilities type of constructor. He's more of a melee constructor. So I guess the last thing we'll do is show some examples of his melee abilities. Critical hits with your hardware melee weapons will trigger the Kinetic Overload perk. And Kinetic Overload is that little green and white glowing effect you see whenever you get a critical hit. Uh, we'll go ahead and try to trigger it right here. There it is. It's like a little white and green glowing effect. And the Kinetic Overload by itself is going to help you do more damage and knock back. 
He also has a maximum overload perk, which is going to help you do even more damage with Kinetic Overload. Another melee ability that he has is called Kinetic Overdrive. And that's going to help you do damage to multiple targets within a half tile radius whenever kinetic overload is triggered. So let's go ahead and do it now. And you see we were able to do damage to multiple targets right there and right there. Because kinetic overload triggered both times. And we had multiple targets within a half tile radius. Another melee ability that he has is the increased attack speed. And you can attack even faster than this if you put a perk on it that increases attack speed. Or if you're playing with a soldier who has a war cry, that can increase your attack speed. But he already does have a perk that increases it, and this is how fast it is. He also has a perk that decreases the amount of energy used whenever you use your heavy attack. And you see right there, it only took 12 energy to use our heavy. And he also has a perk that increases his crit rating with hardware melee weapons. Anyways, I want to go ahead and try to take out this non-elemental yeah, level 100 smasher smash. using just our pulverizer. And first, we're going to start off with our heavy. I think that was a kinetic overload perk. It just happened right there. And yeah, it's just going to keep happening every time you get a critical hit. And again, with that maximum overload perk, you can really do a lot of damage every time you trigger that kinetic overload. So yeah, that's what his melee looks like against a level 100 non-elemental smasher. Also, keep in mind that his kinetic overload deals plasma as well as energy damage. And that's going to help you do a little bit more damage when it comes to elemental enemies. Alright, so now that we've gone over all of the perks, we're going to go ahead and get some gameplay. And the mission we're going to do is this level 88 deliver the bomb group mission. And we're also going to be doing it solo. But yeah, here we go. The bomb is on the move. Keep it safe. Uh, I'm mainly planning on using my pulverizer only, but considering this is a group mission, uh, I may have to use my rocket launcher, I'm not sure. Depends on how many husk we get. Uh, but we were sort of lucky when it comes to the modifiers. The main modifier I dislike when using melee weapons is exploding death burst. Because every time you kill a regular husk, they'll explode and do damage to you. Uh, and obviously you don't want to get too close to them or use melee weapons when you get that modifier. But we sort of got lucky with our modifiers. Uh, they do have healing death burst. So they can heal the surrounding husk, but they're not going to be doing extra damage to you. I believe this is our first time getting gameplay of a Deliver the Bomb mission on the new desert map. Or I should say Thunder Route 99 because that's what this one is. So I don't know, we may go ahead and show this escort part as well. But I was thinking from this point forward, uh, we'll probably just cut this part out. Because as you can tell, it's, it's pretty simple. Pretty easy. Even on group missions. Go ahead and take these guys out. And I'm just now noticing we probably should use our heavy attack a little bit more often. We'll try to use it here. Since we have perks that help with our heavy attack. Uh, let's go ahead and use our decoy. Help us out a little bit. We'll go ahead and use our turret as well. But yeah, we're at the end of the escort. Oh no. Don't die. Don't die at the end. Just take a moment to appreciate how cool that is. Alright, so I think we're just about ready. They are spawning from both the south and north directions. And we do have three defenders helping us out. As you can see, we're right at the build limit. But I believe once we start the defense, we can add some more. So we'll place down our base and add a couple traps. But yeah, let's go ahead and get started. Here we go, people. And you see the build limit uh, just disappeared. So let's go ahead and place down our base. There we go. And I also wanted to place down a couple more traps just to help us out a little. We're also going to add some over here. And it's like we have nature enemies. So I may change the weapons that they're using. Use one with fire. We're going to have to make some ammo as well. And then we'll start using our melee weapon. 
Matter of fact, we could probably go ahead and start now. Uh, it's a good thing we didn't build with metal. Let's go ahead and use our decoy to help us out a little bit. I'm under attack! There we go. Also need to add some traps in this tunnel as well. Again, I didn't want to go over the build limit, so uh, let's go ahead and throw up our turret. We could probably place down some traps as well. Then I think we'll be good to go. Oh my goodness. Let's go ahead and move these guys back a little bit. Put another decoy and place a couple more traps. Then I think we're good to go. All right, here we go, people. Uh, they're also spawning from over here. Should probably go ahead and place down some flame grill floor traps. Help out with those who make it through that tunnel. And let's go back over here and check this side out. There we go. All right, so now that I think we've finished the build, uh, we're just gonna use the pulverizer from here on out. Uh, we may need to make some ammo for our defender. Let's go ahead and make it real quick. And I know you can hold square and craft it that way, but this way is a lot faster. All right, here we go. Let's go ahead and throw up another turret. Help us out. We did get some people request that I use the Vendor Tech Slammer. But uh, I don't have it leveled up yet. But as soon as we do get it leveled up, I'll put an element on it and get some gameplay of that. But yeah, this isn't the first time that we've played with uh, Steel Wool Sid. I have played a few matches with him before. And in my opinion, he's one of the best melee heroes in the game at the moment. I kind of feel like he's just as good, if not better, than Harvester Sarah. And I say that because he has that increased attack speed. And he also has uh, increased crit rating, which Sarah also has. One good thing about Harvester Sarah is that she does have abilities that are more lethal than Steel Wool Sids. Uh, the one thing that sort of separates him from Harvester Sarah, though, is that uh, kinetic overload perk and maximum Here overload. Oh, they're breaking through over here. Oh, my goodness. And that kinetic oh, overdrive perk. I feel like those perks make him just as good, if not better, than Harvester Sarah. But, yeah, that's just my opinion. For those of you who have tried him out, let me know what you think about him in the comments below. Also, let me know what loadouts you all used when playing with them. But yeah, I think that'll do it for our first Steel Wool Sid gameplay. One of the best melee heroes in the game, in my opinion. And definitely the best melee constructor. Anyways, that'll do it for this one. I hope y'all enjoyed the video, and thanks for watching.